Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The Asset Store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video let's check out some highlights for November 23. Now, normally I make one video on systems and one on visuals, although this month, because of Unite and various other things that really messed up my schedule, because of that, this video has both lists. As always, there's links to the asset in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Also, I'm not sure if or how member videos are promoted over here on YouTube, but I just published the Q&A for November. If you're a channel member, either here on YouTube or on Patreon, then go check it out. Feel free to ask any questions about any project you're working on, anything related to Unity or C Sharp. I'll go through those questions and do my best to help. Some examples from last month. Gabriel asked, how did I get this much knowledge? Then Dan asked if I have done anything on late joining multiplayer games. Kermerica asked about how to make a border system like in 4X space games. Ironclad VR asked about events, saving and loading, and also if I would make YouTube shorts talking about these Q&A questions. So check it out in the link in the description and I'll try my best to answer your questions. My question of the day system is also going well. The last question is an interesting one about save data and how to convert between strings, numbers and so on. You can check it out on the website main page or check your emails if you signed up for them. And finally, the Black Friday sales are about to end, so if there's something you need, definitely get it quickly. The one on the asset store has the Cyber Week live right now with 50% off on pretty much all of the best assets. If you like the low poly style, then the Synthi store also has a Cyber Monday sale also ending in about one day. The flash deal is on the shops pack. This one is really awesome if you want to make some kind of mall tycoon game. There are also two great humble bundles. There's one with tons of blender courses and materials. I followed this one myself quite a while ago and I really enjoyed it. I really learned a lot. And there's also a bundle with a massive amount of 2D sprites. Lots of characters, cars, environments, space pack, UI pack, and tons more. Those are all linked in the description, which as usual, those are all affiliate links. So if you buy anything through those links, it's the same price to you and I get a nice commission. All right, so starting off with a system that does exactly what it says. It's a parkour and climbing system. If you've been playing the recent Assassin's Creed and you'd like to build something like that, then this could be a great starting point. The animations are a little bit stilted, but it works exactly as you expect. It features some regular box climbing. You can jump on some edges. You can swing from bars, jump from edge to edge. You can vault, balance, and tons more. To create a climb point, you just select an object in the level and use the included tool to mark it as climbable, swingable, mountable, and so on. Then the character is smart enough to identify the nearby climb point and select the right animation. Now, I must say this is one system that I've always wanted to research for myself. When I played the recent Assassin's Creed, it made me want to research that even more. So hopefully in the future, I'll have some more time to research this topic. But if you just want a tool that just works, then check this one out. Next is something that a lot of games have, like for example, Assassin's Creed, which is a navigation system. This one is actually not just one element, but rather a ton of tracking and navigation elements all in one single pack. You've got a radar, kind of like a minimap. Then you've got a flat compass, like in something like Skyrim. You've got some on-screen indicators, some edge arrows, and tons more. It's made by Infinity PBR, so all the scripts are really very nicely detailed and very well put together. And it also comes with some video tutorials to help you get started. So if you need to guide your players in some way, then a tool like this one can save you a ton of time. Then here's one that I hope doesn't get this video demonetized. It's called Gore Simulator. Like name implies, it lets you create different body parts of a mesh and then slice them during gameplay. It doesn't have to be horror game gore. It doesn't have to be something super intense. It can just be something like Doom, where you have enemies and you just want them to blow up into various pieces. Or simply, maybe some skeletons, kind of like Skyrim, where you really just want them to break into bones. It includes a custom editor to make it super easy to use. You just assign a skin mesh render, pick a button, and it automatically creates all the colliders and all the various separated body parts. If you have some kind of action game, then this is one of those things that can easily be added with a tool like this one, and it can really help take your game to the next level. Next, here's a super simple one, emojis for text mesh pro. This one adds actual emojis to text mesh pro. So this is not just a sprite pack. With this, you can copy paste actual emojis like text emojis. You can copy paste them into regular text objects and they will be rendered perfectly. It comes with a pre-built sprite asset with the most popular emojis. It also allows you to create custom sprite asset if you want to use some different icons. Basically, it's a simple tool that does exactly what it says. If you have some kind of chat system in your game, then this could be a nice way to make it a little bit more special. Then here we have one to help you polish up your world. It's some cloud shadows. This lets you create clouds of various shapes and then you can watch the shadows that those clouds cast directly on the floor. This is one of those really subtle things that you never really notice, but as soon as you add it, you do see a massive difference. You can modify a ton of properties on the clouds. You can make them thicker or thinner, move fast or slow. You can change the color, the randomness, the animation, and tons more parameters. Really, this is a great way to make your world feel much more alive. Up next, here's a great one for helping you keep track of your time. Now, for me, a long time ago, 
I did use to track my time. I had a program that would track every single second. Although nowadays, since I'm pretty much working all the time, I don't really use it anymore. But a tool like this one can be quite useful, especially if you're making games on the side and you really want to keep track of how much time it takes you to build something. This one is a simple tool that tracks time both active and idle. It tracks the start and end times and then shows it all in some nice graphs and pie charts. Then for another relatively simple one, here is a color picker UI. It does exactly what you want, lets you pick some colors. It includes a bunch of templates so you can pick the one that you want. This one is a great tool to include alongside some kind of modding tools in your game. You can use it to let the player customize their player character, player color, logo color, or really anything. Then here's a tool designed to help solve something that every game has to deal with, which is bootstrapping. Just with a few clicks, you can define a bootstrap scene and execute essential code before starting the regular gameplay. So things like, for example, a sound manager or a music manager object, or maybe in multiplayer games, something like a network manager, you really need those objects to be initialized before going into regular gameplay. With a tool like this one, you can easily automate that process by simply implementing an interface, and then it will automatically make sure those objects are initialized before the gameplay. So this looks like a nice and simple tool to solve a really common problem. Next, every game has tutorials which you need to build in some way, so here's the tool to help that. You define each tutorial stage, you run some custom code on stage start or end, then define all the conditions to complete that stage. You can easily make it based on some distance between two objects, make it based on time, clicks, or really trigger it manually. With the events for the stage start and end, you can easily set up some visuals to guide the player throughout the tutorial. There's a bunch of tools like this one, and this one seems to be one of the better ones with a really nice UI. Then if you normally work on multiple objects, this tool sounds really great. It helps you link multiple projects together, and then you can share assets between them. So basically you share a folder and in that folder you place whatever assets you want and all the projects that are linking to that folder, all of them can use the same assets. This can be super useful to save space if you use the same assets all over the place in several projects. So this one looks like a pretty simple to use but also very capable. Alright, so that's the top 10 new systems and tools. Now on to the top 20 new visuals list. Alright, so starting off with a really nice looking pack for making an RTS or a tower defense game. Every time I see one of these packs, it makes me want to make an RTS. But then I remember that genre takes a massive amount of work and I'm already so busy, so I can't really do it. But if you do have the time and you want to make an RTS, then a pack like this is perfect. You've got tons of units, all with some really nice animations. There's eight towers, each with three levels of upgrades. There's various buildings, vehicles, and planes, all with some really nice colors, which you can obviously recolor for multiple players. Or maybe you need a really high quality, really unique mech T-Rex. Look at this one. I love the model, it's an excellent look, excellent style, and it also comes with some great looking animations. This dev has tons more mechanical dinosaurs, so with a bunch of these, maybe you can build something like Horizon Zero Dawn. Then if you have some voxel prototype that you'd like to build, check out this one. It features a ton of cube-like objects that you can use to build entire worlds. You could either use this to make some pre-made maps, or you can give them to the player alongside some kind of building system to build something like Minecraft. Features a little bit of everything with some very unique biomes. Next, if you need a great modern UI pack, check out this one. All of it is very modern, very clean, very slick. You've got lots of bars and frames. You've got various buttons, toggles and sliders. It also includes some editor scripts so you can really modify everything to your heart's content. Or if that's too modern and you want something a bit more medieval, check out this one. It's a modular town pack. You've got tons of objects, over 300 meshes, some VFX and decals, all in a really good looking realistic style. The demo scene includes an entire town with animated objects and fully interval buildings. So this is one of those packs where if you just enjoy building things then you can just have fun with this pack without even having to make an entire game. Next, if you need some VFX, look at this one. You've got over 200 effects. There's lots of fire, lots of smoke, then also some really nice beams, some explosions, and all kinds of auras. Adding some great VFX is a super easy way to polish your games, so definitely pick up a large pack like this one to really make your game stand out. Then if you're making a game in Japan, check out this one. Personally, I've never been to Japan, I'd love to go someday, but based on all the anime that I've seen, this perfectly matches exactly what I imagine. It features a ton of objects of all types, everything you need to make an entire town or an entire city. You've got lots of apartments, houses and shops, you've got plenty of signs, flowers, cars and trains. Also, you can build a really nice world and then just play around. Then here's a very expensive but a really great one. It's a highly realistic anatomy pack. I've seen a bunch of these packs and I'm always fascinated. I guess people buy these packs to make all kinds of medical apps with Unity. This is all super realistic and I assume it's all medically accurate. At least based on what I know from working out, all the muscles seem to be correct. It's interesting how the fat distribution for the model seems to have something like 8% body fat in the abs but then 15% in the legs. So pretty much just like a fitness influencer. You've got more 
shapes to modify the size for all kinds of organs, view all of the details about the muscle, fat, heart, blood, circulation, and really anything. Certainly a very unique thing, all with super high quality 8K textures. Then if there's a bike game you'd like to make, check out this one. It features a bunch of super bikes. They all look seriously awesome. I know nothing about bikes. All I know is that these look really cool. The pack is set on low poly, but the models are actually quite detailed. It features five super bikes all with separated parts for easy animation, and it even includes some nice speed and RPM dashboards. Then if you need tons of animations, check out this boxing pack. It's got quite a huge amount, over 350 animations for really all kinds of scenarios. You've got lots of quick jabs, some huge punches, you've got some serious knockdowns, some get-up animations, some dodges, and really powerful finishers. It also includes some nice win, victory, or defeat animations. So this would be perfect for a boxing game, or really just some kind of beat-em-up. Next here we have the latest Cinti pack, this one came out in late October, right on Halloween, and it very much fits that theme. It starts off nice and normal during the daytime, and then at night it turns into a very spooky horror carnival. Right away, this reminds me of playing Left 4 Dead, that mission on that carnival with the gnome, really fun times. This pack is in their signature gorgeous low poly style. It features tons of objects, buildings, characters, props, and even a working ferris wheel and merry-go-round. Then if you need some explosions, check out this one. All are really high quality very realistic with some 3D volume. There's some nice fire and then some satisfying smoke. This was all created using fluid simulation, so it's all very accurate. If you just need one high quality unique character, then check out this one. It's a modern samurai. It's a really nice high quality model and it's all fully rigged, so it works with any animations. You can add some plot physics for the trench coat or just grab that really gorgeous nice sword. Then for another spooky thing, here is an apocalyptic hospital. Definitely very spooky. Abandoned hospitals are always very creepy. You could just use this demo scene directly if you need some kind of nice new level for your game, whether it be horror, mystery or something. Next, if you're working on a pirate game, check out this one. It's a huge pack with a ton of assets, all in a really nice slow poly style. It's got some really very inviting colors. The pack is giant with a ton of unique locations. There's a castle, island and a bunch more. You've got ships, trading and a bunch more things. So if you're a fan of something like Black Flag or you want to make your own skull and bones before Ubisoft does it, then check this one out. Then here's a very fun one a really fancy golden rabbit. Definitely a very strange, very unique model. These kinds of super custom assets always make me wonder just how many games would work with this. It seems like something that is extremely custom. It's got multiple skins, it's fully rigged with a whole bunch of animations. So perhaps this could be your player or perhaps just a fun, unique companion. Next, if you need a water shader, check out this one. It's some really nice stylized water. It looks really good and it's interactive. It's got a mountain of parameters to get it working exactly as you want it. Then if you need tons and tons of materials, check out this mega pack. It's got a little bit of everything, so you've got lots of bricks, metal, grass, some marble, some wood, sand, and a bunch more. All with some really high quality 4K textures. It includes the base map, normal map, and a mask map. Next, if you'd like to make some kind of Forge Battlesmith game, check out this one. It's a complete forge and armory with all kinds of props that you would expect. You have some anvils, there's a ton of hammers, lots of fire, lots of stuff. And it also has lots of crafted weapons, so swords, shields, pistols, and rifles. So a pack like this one definitely makes me want to build some kind of blacksmith tycoon game. Then if you'd like to make a nice and inviting medieval game, check out this one. It features tons of modular pieces to build any level you want. You've got towers, catapults, some pretty cute soldiers, and some bowmen. Definitely has that perfect casual mobile look. So this would be the perfect starting point for something inspired by Clash Royale. All right, so those are my top 20 new visual assets on the Unity Asset Store for November 23. There's a link to all in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.